again and welcome to New Blue FX Tips and Techniques. I'm Ian Stark for New Blue. In the first tutorial for New Blue's Titler Pro, we covered the basics to give you a good introduction to the user interface and the kind of cool things that you can do with Titler Pro. If you haven't already looked at that tutorial, you might benefit from doing so now. In the next few tutorials, we'll go a little deeper into specific areas of Titler Pro, starting with styles. We'll kick off with a quick review of what we covered about styles in the introduction tutorial. Firstly, every paragraph must have at least one style, otherwise you wouldn't be able to see it. It can be any type of style, but by default, every new paragraph is a simple, plain, white 3D face with no extrusion. In other words, it looks like regular 2D text. 2D and 3D style layers differ in one very significant way. 2D styles are more suited if you want organic, blurred, grungy or natural looking text, whereas 3D styles are the right choice if you want crisp, sharp looking text. And if you want both, you can have both. You can mix and match 2D and 3D styles, and you can have as many of each as you want. So let's take a look at all five different style types, starting with the default 3D face. Color lets me either select the face color from a palette of default or custom colors, or by using the eyedropper. The eyedropper lets you choose any color from within the edit preview window, which is useful if you're trying to match colors in multiple paragraphs. Below color is gradient. By selecting gradient, the swatch displays two grab handles that represent the start and finish colors and the angle of your gradient. Clicking on either handle brings up the color picker, and lo, a gradient is born. Clicking and dragging the handles move them around the swatch and change the angle and proportions of each color in the gradient. Finally, textures. And this is where Titler Pro opens up the world to let you clothe your titles in absolutely anything you want. Clicking the swatch brings up a selection of pre-installed textures, and of course you can use your own images, be they Ping, JPEG, Bitmap, Targa, or good old Direct Draw. By default, the texture is repeated for each character in your paragraph, but if that's not what you want, click on Stretch to Paragraph, and the texture is, well, stretched across the paragraph. But what's this Environment Map checkbox? An environment map causes the paragraph to appear to reflect the texture as though it were placed a distance away from it. By clicking the box it doesn't really do anything exciting, but when I rotate the text it's a different story. Using different textures as environment maps you can create all sorts of interesting effects, from water refraction to firelight to shiny metal surfaces. For now though I'm going to keep things clean and just use a simple gradient for my 3D face. Moving down the list of style attributes, we find Extrusion. This lets us add depth to the text. If I change the x-axis rotation slightly, you'll see it more clearly. Opacity pretty much speaks for itself. At 100, the layer is fully visible. And at 0, it's completely invisible and, dare I say it, pointless. The offset parameters are better demonstrated when you have more than one style layer, so I'll come back to those in a moment. Layer depth controls where on the z-axis your style layer will sit. Negative values move the layer backwards, positive values move it forwards. Again, this is probably easier to demonstrate with more than one style layer. Finally, width lets you widen or shrink the vector around the font as it was originally drawn. If you shrink the width, you can actually thin out the font slightly. OK, let's add a new layer. We'll stick with 3D for the moment and make this one a 3D outline. Notice that new layers are positioned immediately behind the previous layer you created, and we can change that by using the Layer Depth parameter. You can create some simple bevel effects by just nudging the front edge of the outline layer ahead of the 3D face layer. We have a new layer attribute here, Thickness. As well as letting you set how stupid this layer is, Thickness adjusts the outer edge of an outline, in other words, how far out the outline goes. Outline also has width, which describes the inside vector of the outline, in other words, the same line that the font originally drew. So with these two controls, you can create gaps between your font face and your outline to make some interesting styles. It's actually also a very handy cleanup tool, in that you can use it to fill any unwanted gaps between style layers. 
Now that we have two layers, let's take a look at those offset controls. And it's really very simple. You can offset the layer relative to the position of the original text in either the Y or the X directions. This has all sorts of uses, but the most obvious, I guess, is to position shadows where you want them. We'll look at that in a moment. Remember, of course, when you offset a layer, you aren't changing the position of your paragraph, only the position of that style layer. We have another new parameter in 3D Outline, and that's the roundness value. If I increase the width, you'll be able to see it better. What roundness does is to smooth out the corners of the layer to take it from a hard angled effect to a smooth, rounded appearance. Let's turn now to 2D styles, starting with shadows. Now, in order to see a dark shadow, I'm going to need to change my background color to either white or gray. And now you can see when I add the shadow style layer, it drops a very nice, simple shadow behind the 3D face. Using the offset controls, you can position it wherever you like. And don't forget, you can also change it on the Z axis, even to bring the shadow in front of the text. And you can change the shadow's color, add a gradient or texture, or change its opacity in exactly the same way as with any other layer. The major difference with a 2D shadow layer is that you have the extra blur parameter that really lets you fine tune your shadow. And finally, if it's just a shadow you're looking for, you can delete the solid layer completely. Although I'm not going to go into using effects in this tutorial, you'll notice there's an advanced section which reveals the option to add an effect. Clicking on that brings up a dialog where you can choose from a wide variety of very cool effects. I'm going to select angled energy from the Shear Energy folder and look at that. Really simple and really cool, even with the default settings. Let's start a new project and add the second type of 2D layer, a 2D outline. We have most of the parameters you'll be familiar with from 3D outlines, but instead of extrusion, we now have a blur control which pretty much speaks for itself. Again, delete other layers to leave just the outline. The final 2D style type is 2D face, and again, these are the same controls you have for a 3D face, so they'll all be quite familiar. Actually, you'll notice that when using 2D faces, you can't stretch a texture across a paragraph or use a texture as an environment map. Do those things with 3D faces. So there you have it. In summary, 2D styles for organic, blurry and rough looks, 3D styles for crisp, angular looks. Don't forget to explore the library where you'll find a ton of preset styles and project templates to dissect and tweak for yourself. Keep looking out for more Title Pro tutorials. We're going to be looking at adding effects, using transitions, keyframing and much more. Thanks for joining me and for learning a little bit about Title Pro. Find out more at www.newbluefx.com. Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs>